the hearing and I'd like to get started by the announcement here it's most people I've seen that uh, meeting yet it's wonderful. Uh, pursuant to Massachusetts general laws chapter 87 sections 3 and 4 a public hearing is being held on this day October 21st 2014 6 p.m. at 6 Central Street Brookfield Massachusetts and is intended to consider the removal or pruning of the following public trees. First on the agenda, 12 Maple Street, the removal of a 35.1 inch sugar maple due to canopy dieback to be determined if the location will be replanted. Is there anyone here who would like to speak to that tree or the removal thereof? Absolutely. Just ask a general question, it'll save me asking it two or three times. But it says, um, that last sentence about to be determined? Yes. Can you explain what that, who's going to determine that? I, mean, I shall. And are you going to say that tonight, or? If, if I'm going to, if it's going to be replanted? Right. Well, it, it, it's a budgetary issue as well. If there is enough money to replant in the spring, then we can entertain that notion for this spring. Does that answer your question? Well, Are you looking for a yes or no on whether it's going to be replanted? Right. Okay, <laughs> all right. Um, and the reason that I said to be determined if the, if the location is to be replanted, uh, that specific location, uh, I would not replant at at this time. Uh, owing to the uh, phytotoxicity of sugar maples, when they are removed, then it's not a healthy site at which to plant other trees. So uh, I, I would not entertain replanting that site specifically, but others absolutely in replacement. Bill, that this particular tree is diseased, right? Yes, no. yeah, 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 yeah. And if at any point anyone has a question about any, any of the, uh, the, the language, please stop me and I'll try to clarify. Uh, the second item, 9 Weber Road, the removal of two sugar maple trees, 27 inch and 15 inch due to canopy dye pack as well, also to be determined if the sites will be replanted. Does anyone like to speak on those? Merrick Public Library, Lincoln Street. Uh, the removal of a 22.1 inch ash tree due to canopy dieback and a 6.0 inch Norway maple due to its proximity to the ash to be removed. Uh, the location will be replanted. I have spoken to the representatives of the library and they are in agreement to replant the site. Would anyone like to speak to the Merrick Public Library removal and replanting? Yeah. 50 Lake Road, designated a scenic road by the town of Brookfield. The removal of a 33.9 inch sugar maple due to canopy dieback. And I may also note that I did witness Amalarian root rot in that tree as well, so. Um, uh, 
and then the pruning of a 20 inch limb on a 47 inch sugar maple uh, to later be determined if the location oh, of the removal tree will be replanted. Does anyone like to speak on that? Okay, that's in front of my house. What about when you cut the tree down, you leave a big stump? That's the worst part. The stump should be ground, yeah, yeah. It should be, or will the town do that? I have it in the specifications and scope of work that the, the stump should be ground down. It is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 44 Lake Road, also designated a scenic road by the town. Uh, the pruning of a 46.5 inch white oak. Would anyone like to speak to that tree? Yes. That's my son's property, and prior to that, it was mine. So mm -hmm. I have an investment in that tree. Um, my concern, and I have voiced this to you, uh -huh. um, my understanding is that the limb that goes over the road yeah. is what will be pruned. Is this correct? There's been no determination made as to what is going to be pruned on that tree. Then when will that determination be made? When I'm able to evaluate the tree and speak to the contractor who's going to do the pruning. So, so you will give direction to the to the contractor um, to make sure that it's, I'm, I'm more concerned. My family is more concerned that the tree will be over overly cut and pruned. Um, there's nothing worse than half a tree, as we all know, and um, that is a real asset to the property. And I think the other thing that was in the news recently that uh, work was done on Route 6 in the Cape, and um, instead of taking out the thinning out trees, they just cut down everything. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, we just want to know that there's some oversight. Um, right. That these guys aren't just going to come in and sure. cut the trees. Sure. And, and that's, uh, that's my uh, jurisdiction. I oversee that work. So uh -huh. prior to. Uh, and, uh, and after, we're going to make sure that any prunings that are done are done to specification. Okay. okay. And, and there are all of our trees, uh, so we, we all should enjoy them. So I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, number six, seven Prouty mm -hmm. Street. The removal of a 2.6 inch Norway maple, that location will not be replanted. Uh, it is, uh, the petitioner on that is Mr. Holcraft, and uh, the reason for the removal of the 2.6 inch Norway is to facilitate the moving of the house at that site. Would anyone like to speak to that? I have a problem with using taxpayer money to remove any tree that doesn't present a danger present a, a problem or a disease. Uh-huh. I don't think that should be the town's responsibility. That the petitioner is going to pay the cost for the removal of that tree. Uh, number seven, East Main Street, also designated a scenic road by the town. The removal of four trees opposite house number 12 uh, to facilitate house re relocation. Three red, road, red oak trees, excuse me, 17.1 inch, 11.5 inch, and 9.8 inches respectively, and one 5.9 inch ash tree. Petitioning property owner will replant trees to be removed at location to be determined. The petitioner in this case is Mr. Holcraft as well. Would anyone like to speak to the removal of these? I live on that road. Yes. And we frequently walk on that road, and there, there are certain points on that road that are nice and shady, especially when I'm walking with my family. Uh -huh. And that is one of those points. And if you cut those trees down, it leaves a large gap in the canopy of shade on that road. And it's not. It's a very popular road for families to go walking on, and you'll see horseback riders and everything. And um, not to mention the historic uh, history on that road with mm -hmm. those trees as well. And I understand that the petitioner said that he's going to replant, um, but 
but even if he does, it, it won't, might not be at that location, and it's going to take decades for the trees to grow to the point where the trees are now. Sure, sure. And, and trees are like children. You know, we, we have children and they're small and we watch them grow and that takes a long time as well. And we, we get to enjoy them at each stage. And I'm not saying that uh, that site is going to be replanted it, because it would not be. I would not recommend that site there to be replanted. In my opinion, those trees as it is now are too close to the road. And they're also exhibiting a tropic behavior over the, uh, the right of way, over the paved area. The trees are healthy, but they are, are uh, exhibiting tropic behavior over the pavement, uh, which says to me that in time, there may be reactive wood growing, uh, it, you know, to compensate for the tropism, and the trees are going to become compromised. And, and that could happen at any tree, but the, the lean on those trees, and, and I do understand what you're saying as far as the shade being offered by those trees, uh, and I'm not going to try to speak to anything other than the fact that it's been peti petitioned by Mr. Holcraft uh, that we have those, he removed those trees to facilitate the removal, uh, the moving of that house. Right, I understand the, the mm -hmm. reasoning behind it, but, and, and as you said, there, there, you can't determine when those trees could potentially fall. Sure. And as, as of right now, they're perfectly healthy. Sure. And, but it, and also, it's going to be on number eight on your agenda. Uh, the, the second group of trees that you're going to cut down is right after that first canopy that you're going to cut. So that's going to be a glaring, there's going to be no shade in that section at all whatsoever from now. Once you cut the, the second group of trees that you also have on the list on East Main Street. So you okay. might be like, you have that first group uh, right across from 12, and then mm -hmm. you have the second group at number 16. And so there's just, there's, it's just not going to be the same. It's, it, 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 you're, you're just going to ruin the whole road by cutting all those trees down. Well, I don't want to speak to the yet to, to that. All I want to speak to is that uh, it's been petitioned by Mr. Holcraft that these trees be removed so to there's facilitate. Nothing, so there's nothing to, to that we can do now to save the trees. Then this is just for information right now. At this no, no, this is a public hearing, and, and everyone should be given the opportunity to uh, to voice mm -hmm. their opinion. A and um, it has been offered to me by Mr. Holcraft that in order to move the building from its mm -hmm. current location to 16 East Main Street, these trees would need to be removed. And the, uh, mm -hmm. the downside to some construction is that there is the, the need to remove uh, healthy trees, and that happens to be the case in this instance. So I thought that we were deciding this. It sounds like it's already been decided that they have to come down from the they would have to come down for the construction, but this is an opportunity for people to present their, their uh, 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 opinions <coughs> on the matter. Right. Mr. Stenger? coming across to me that your mind's made up. My mind is not made up. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of the town. I'm sorry, Mr. Comtois. What does mm -hmm. the removal of these trees facilitate? The moving of the house or a driveway? In... Item number seven, which I have here at the, the removal of the four trees, the three red oak trees and the one ash tree, that's to facilitate the movement of the house. And trimming back the, what do you call it, topiary? What would you call it? Oh, tropism. Okay. Yeah. Well, it, it, that's what the trees themselves are exhibiting right now. They're leaning over the pavement. So pruning wouldn't be... Uh, pruning, no, not with the way those trees are growing. It's just a trunk and then a very, uh, uh, the canopy is, is, is fairly sparse up at the top. So uh, I don't think uh, pruning would be the answer here because we would be just left with sticks. So it's not as though they're actually real full trees. Well, they are at the top. Oh, at the but, top. But, you know, that's not for the first uh, yes. 40 or 50 feet or so oh, do we okay. encounter a canopy. Are there other trees behind those trees that'll grow in, there, in a canopy? There are mm -hmm. trees behind them and, and they may exhibit some growth toward the road. Uh, limbs may branch out uh, and may offer shade over time. Uh, so that, that is a possibility. I'm not saying that that's an absolute, but it's a possibility and it, it's a fairly forested area. And these, uh, these the are road. on town property? I'm sorry? And these are on town property? Yes, they are. Yes. 
Yeah. Um, could, could I ask the young couple now that's speaking in the back? Do you, how close do you live to these, um, to these trees? Are you closer to um, 16 or where are you basically on um, East Main Street? Um, we're closer to 16. So I mean, would this affect shade at your home? Um, not directly, no. Uh, okay. Just on our walks. Just on your walks. And okay. It would, it would affect a little bit of privacy when they actually install the house. There's, but as of right now, it's not affecting us. Okay. Sir. Uh, can I go way back for a second and ask a couple of general questions? Absolutely. Um, this meeting was scheduled sometime in the past. Uh -huh. And then did you contact the town clerk and cancel the meeting, the hearing? No, I did not. Okay. Why would the town clerk post on the website this afternoon, it's up there today? And that's why I called the selectors office this morning because I thought the meeting was canceled. Uh -huh. Because it says, postponed that has been scheduled for October 21st. The new date will be posted here once it is established, and that's the town website. So, to, to my knowledge, the notification in the paper stood. Okay, and how about the two public places in town in addition to the trees? Where, where were they? The, it was posted in the, on the website, on the town's website. Posted on Facebook, it was posted up on the bulletin board. And, and on, okay, and on the bulletin and board the as well. On the bulletin board outside? Mm -hmm. in, the, in the foyer. In the foyer. So the town webs, it's on Facebook. It was so those of us who don't have Facebook and go to the town website, the mm -hmm. official website. It was posted it in the foyer as well. It says it's postponed. It's, it's the paper I wasn't going to show up until I called, just happened to call today. Because somebody said the meeting's on tonight. And I said, no, it's postponed. Well, it so anyway, that's okay. I don't know. So somebody told I'll have to see the town clerk and see why he post posted a meeting to postpone it without authority. Uh, I mean, to my knowledge, the, the the meeting stood as it as it had been uh, scheduled. Okay. Okay. Um, so now my questions then go to um, number seven. Um, where will those four trees be planted? Within the town. On East Main Street? Maybe, maybe not. When will that be determined? Uh, I don't have a definite date, but I'd like to plan for the Arbor Day celebration mm -hmm. to have those trees replanted at that time. No, but my question is, they're being cut on East Main Street. Yes. Will they be planted? Someplace on East they they may be they may be on East if there is an appropriate site on East Main Street to replant those trees. The problem with street tree planting is it's more involved in, than just saying, well, we're going to put a tree here. There are a lot of considerations. There are overhead wire considerations. Uh, there's soil type. There's uh, you know just the area that the tree would be planted in. Would it be conducive to growing the type of tree that we want to see growing in that spot? And I would think that East Main Street would be a wonderful spot to replant on, but uh, that's, that's left to my discretion at this time, whether we do replant there. Do you understand how difficult it is to sit here and listen to that and not before the meeting's over, write a formal objection so that it then goes to the selectmen. Because, if, you know, if you were to tell me those four mm -hmm. trees are going to be replanted on East Main Street, mm -hmm. that would be what I'm looking for. But, you, but and traveling up and down East Main Street, uh -huh. there are a number of places where they could be planted. And, so and I'm, I'm more than willing to entertain the idea of replanting on East Main Street like I had said, since that is where we are taking them from, if we find four appropriate sites, then I think that would be the appropriate place to plant. Are, are, wires, are wires an issue in that area right now? They, they are, they are, and, and, the, and the site could be an issue as well. 
But your first option would be replant yes. on East Main Street. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Oh, okay. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think. I, are you looking for me to commit to replanting on East Main Street? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what if the soil isn't good for it, though? Yeah. What are you going to do then? <laughs> yeah, I I can't, in good conscience, in best management practices, replant a site that will uh, not support a tree or impede house relocation. So, uh, if if East Main Street has four conducive sites, then we'll proceed as planned. Okay. What? <laughs> Thank you. Then who chooses the trees? I do. Okay. And planting them? Uh, Mr. Holcraft has volunteered his services to replant under my direction. Okay. And to purchase the trees as well. Okay. Now, it wouldn't be just the four, it would be the four, three, one, and then the five in the next section. Correct? We're talking 13 trees? The, uh, the five trees that are in the driveway location, um, I had not specified to Mr. Holcraft that we would replant those because uh, to me that's a, uh, a, a that has to happen in order to facilitate the driveway cut. Well, we're, we're jumping across to number eight, but let's, right. let's step back to number seven. We have yes. four, three, and one. That's eight trees, correct, as opposed to the four that Mr. Fagno was referencing? Correct. There's four trees here, and then the five uh, up, up at the actual okay, house. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm reading it incorrectly. Okay. Then. All right, thank you for correcting me. So three and one equals four, so there's four trees. All right, that helps. Um, stumps. Especially when you say they're close to the road. Yeah, stumps, with... as I uh, expressed to Mr. Holcraft, uh, will be ground to at or below grade. And the site will be cleaned up. Uh, and anything as far as uh, brush debris uh, will be cleaned up within two hours of uh, the, re the removals thereof of the trees. So we want to make sure that the site is left in as good or better condition uh, than when it was found. And my last question on that number. Um, who gets the wood? The wood is the, is the person who owns the property abutting the site removals would have the first option. Uh, were that person not to want the wood, the wood will be left there for the public. How, so this goes right to the question. Okay. H how long does it get left there? Before someone... For a reasonable amount of time. Well, the reason I'm asking yes. is a couple of years ago on the North Brookfield Road, uh -huh. um, I have some property there. And the highway department was cutting out some dead trees. Mm -hmm. They'll be there after lunchtime to pick them up. They went home for lunch. I get there at quarter of one. Somebody's already been in there and taken them. <laughs> so the wood doesn't stay there very long. Mm -hmm. So I just, given that the butter is in Ohio, yeah. um, it'll just be interesting to see the race for the wood. Oh, it'll be gone that day, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I would assume so as well. Yeah. Okay. No other questions for me on seven. Sir. It's interesting you take all this time to discuss about cutting trees down before he has a building permit, before he's got the permit to open up the wall, or bordering outside. Um, uh, let's see. What would you call it? It isn't even on the road. It's uh, property that's off the road. To get into it, it's going to cut trees enough. Is that 45 foot post going to get through here? We're all cutting them right now. I don't want to speak to the construction phases or processes. I mean, if it has to do with the trees, then I'm more than happy to entertain any questions. Uh, there are, it's been, I was petitioned to bring it before the town for the removal of uh, public shade trees on a scenic road. 
So the specific ones that are designated to be cut, if there's not enough room, you're going to have another hearing? If there are trees uh, that are blocking the way, then I, I would imagine Mr. Holcraft may uh, seek my services again and uh, petition me as well. But at this time, I can't speak to that. It just seems that uh, you know, like everybody wants to cut the trees down real quick, but he doesn't have a building permit, doesn't have a permit to go through the wall, and doesn't have a curb cut. I think you do that right before you cut the trees down. They've been there a long time. I'm not. I, I'm not here to advise on the construction process. Only for the uh, the trees and their removal and replanting efforts. Yes. Well, I hadn't really thought about that. Can you make the permission to cut trees on East Main Street contingent upon one of the necessary permits? I'd want to refer that to the select board. We unfortunately have no oversight of that, but I was about to say exactly what Mr. Fagnall recommended myself. Yep. We, I, we could I, make it contingent. I think it's yeah. at your discretion, and I think that would be a wise thing to do. I absolutely agree that it would be wise that Mr. Holcraft must uh, come to us with uh, curbing cut and uh, building plans and uh well the necessary permitting yeah, yeah all the necessary cool. permitting uh for the rem uh the moving of and reciting of of the building so duly noted that was an easier commitment than planting four trees on east main street it was, it was Okay, so I've made a note that this is contingent on uh, all the necessary permits in hand. Would anyone else like to speak to uh, to the trees on uh, mm -hmm. East Main Street across from 12? I'm referring to Maple Street. Oh, from Maple Street. Okay, uh, you must have come in a little later. I had already gone through that. Um, may I get right back to you? Okay. I appreciate your patience. Item number eight that I have on my agenda, uh, and it is there is a correction there, it is 16 East Main Street. So I want to make sure that everyone is aware of that. That's not the site, that's the site in front of uh, or behind the area where the trees are going to be removed. The removal of five sugar maple trees, 13.0 inch, 2.8 inch, 6.8 inch, 8.7 inch, and 12.2 inches, uh, respectively, to facilitate house relocation. Uh, to be determined if alternate locations uh, will be replanted. The petitioner, again, Mr. Holcraft, 16 East Main Street. I'd like to entertain uh, uh, questions, concerns, or opinions about that item. Contingent. Contingent as well? Absolutely. Is that the same issue, Mr. Stendrup, with number six? It is, sir, yes. Uh, it's number, uh, both East Main Street items are, are uh, now contingent upon approval. So six, and seven, and eight? Yes, exactly. Thank you for that, number six as well. I would just like to reiterate the entire cost is going to be borne by the petitioner from the removal of the tree to the stump grinding and the site cleanup, the entire cost. Is that correct? Will not be the taxpayers? Nope. Uh, I've had a conversation with Mr. Holcraft uh, to that effect. He is going to pay for the contractual removal, uh, stump grinding, and replanting efforts that are going to be exercised. And you have my word that I'll pull any warrant and not pay it. And of these five listed, how many would you expect might be replanted someplace? Uh, I 
I would entertain the notion to replant two additional trees of the five. Uh, the 13 inch and the 12 inch are, are robust trees and um, I, I would think that they, they might necessitate replanting. So it would be the four trees plus the two trees, six trees in total. Make a note of that. And like I'd said before, East Main Street would be the ideal location if it were to be the ideal location. There are, yeah, yeah, there, there are trees which have issues which I am looking at. I know there's four trees right off Route 9 in the center of town that don't have any canopy left. Uh, somebody even put a yellow sign on them. I don't suppose we can take those down. Someone put a yellow sign on them? In the brand, right up on Route 9. Oh, okay. That's uh, Mass DOT. Okay. Sir? Did you address the ones down those fields? It, the last meeting I had. You uh, brought it to us. I yes. don't think we have to petition legally because it's. No, the trees are dead. And, and, Plus, uh, it's not a scenic road or shade <laughs> trees. That's correct, yeah. Yeah. So, any, any trees I deem to be dead, we don't need a hearing on. Uh, shall we speak to the Maple Street? Uh, number 12, Maple Street, the removal of a 35.1 inch sugar maple tree due to canopy dieback uh, to be determined if the location will be replanted. Um, because are they also going to stop running the two, uh, two other trees they have taken down already? They said they were going to uh, grind them down. They never did. And they said they were going to Okay. Uh, unfortunately, that's news to me at this time. Uh, I, I would move to have the one tree that I would like to see removed now ground. Um, but insofar as the other stumps, I can't speak to those now because I was not directed. Um, Basically, what's going on the road is actually creating a crevice, so it's creating a road itself. That's the reason why we're losing a lot of these sugar maples, is because of the soil compaction. So, um, now, this was due to dead cancer or whatever, it killed the tree, and they took it down and they, they never grounded it or took care of it. Okay. Uh, I, I can take that under advisement. Um, I'm not going to make a determination at this time whether or not we're, we'll move forward with that, uh, but I, I will certainly have a look uh, at the time that uh, the, the contractors are out with the other uh, uh, maple tree that's going to get removed. Maybe if, they, if possible, at least plant one tree back. Because I'm losing three. Mm -hmm. At least get one tree put back. I would be more than happy to replant a tree there. And knowing what I know about the site, I would probably plant it closer to um, Lewis Field side of the property, heading that way. Not immediately, not not immediately where the tree is being removed from. I was referring just uh, for the between, actually between the trees. It's, there's no wires there. There's, it's yeah, connection. that's always a, a, a big consideration of mine. So. Yeah, yeah, I, I'll, uh, I'll make a note then. And that's the fun part of my job. When do we find out when the trees are, de the trees are definitely getting cut down or not? 
especially on East Main Street? Is there a time frame for this? Or? Um, I think we should move to uh, put a, a, a time on uh, Mr. Holcraft's uh, approval. Uh, so that uh, we're not left in waiting. Uh, would anyone care to? Uh, this this is at your discretion. Sir. Usual and customary time. Uh, Mr. Holcraft is available, um, uh, sir. Would you care to speak to that uh, when you might be able to have? Sir, we want to have. Uh, Dave Holcraft, I'm the one who's petitioning to move to have the trees cut and move the house. Right now we're in a petitioning, I um, mean, uh, application situation. Um, a, curb cut, a curb cut has been approved. Um, I'm meeting with the conservation committee tonight to get signed off there. Um, the septic system is just about approved from the health board, and then I have to go and get signed off with the building inspector to get the permit. So. Probably less than 30 days. I mean, uh, uh, as far as the house movers go, they're waiting on me. They're all set to go. Um, as far as these trees on East Main, uh, you've had a couple comments. The trees are tall and there's very little canopy on them. Um, so when those trees are removed, you won't be, there won't be any bald spots there. There won't be much at all. Um, as far as my driveway goes, uh, where I'm cutting five trees there, um, that was the best spot to go to put the driveway in. Um, to the left of the driveway was a huge maple tree and we did not want to disturb that. I'm, I'm a tree buff. I used to, um, so we're gonna put the driveway to the right of this big sugar maple um, so we didn't disturb that tree. Um, as far as the other trees go, there is one significant tree but it has to come down um, to get access to my land. Um, so I don't know if there's any other questions as far as the time frame. I think if, 30 days. If we gave you 30 days oh, yeah, to I produce so. the paperwork? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else have any questions about anything pertaining to the trees of the move or why we're doing this? <clears throat> thank you. Okay. You all set? I believe so. Okay. So, all right. Thank you. Good. Does anyone else have any? What about the time frame for the other trees? I haven't yet uh, solicited some uh, bids yet for the uh, pruning work. Uh, so once I have uh, secured a contractor for that, I'll give them uh, 30 days to complete the work. Are we notify when they're gonna cut near our property? Yes, yes, absolutely. How do you notify us? Um, I can knock on the door. I can make it as easy as that. I would like to post it on the town website mm -hmm. as well. Uh, How much time do we have notice for? You know, like they're going to come tomorrow, the next day, in a week. I'd like to give you a reasonable amount of time notice. Yeah. yeah. So you're you're not either on vacation or away, or or you're you're aware of it and when it's going to happen. Yeah. So are we looking at a day, a week? I, I would say uh, the minimum I, I would give is three days uh, prior to the beginning of the work. Yeah. Is that it? No. I believe so. Mm -hmm. Unless anyone else has any further comments? That's a very good question, and I wish I knew the answer to it. I'm, I'm, I'm putting together a lot of data for the sugar maples that we have in town here, and we're seeing a lot of dieback in them, um, and uh, I don't know exactly what is causing it. It could be any number of, of, of reasons. It's uh, diagnosing uh, a problem that if you look at the tree, you may notice some issues with it right away, but that is probably not what caused the, uh, the tree to begin to die back. 
Um, my guess at this point would be uh, uh, possibly uh, the compaction caused by the roadways. Uh, that's, that, that, that's detrimental to uh, trees of that size. Anyone else? I want to thank you all for your time and patience. Uh, well, thank you. That concludes you, uh, my, my portion of uh, this evening's meeting. Thank you. Thanks sir. A lot. Thank you. You. You've done an excellent job. Bill. Thank you. Thank, thank you for everyone for coming out and voicing your opinion. All right. I will entertain a motion mm -hmm. to approve the expense warrant for October 21st, 2014. Uh, thank so you. moved, sir. Oh, I'll second that. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Entertain a motion to ratify the pay award for October 14th, 2014. So moved. That's it. Three. You guys are done, huh? You're all done. Huh? One and done. Do we have a second? One and done. second. <laughs> Any discussion? I'm having trouble with my back screen. Stop it. <laughs> Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. It's a guys. motion to approve the select <laughs> minutes ratified for 10 7 14. So moved. I'll second that. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Entertain a motion to acknowledge the minutes and monthly reports of the fire department and the police department for September 2014. So moved. I'll second that motion. Any discussion? Are you done all in favor? Aye. 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 Announcements. Halloween events. It's coming, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> Orange tie. Do you, you get it? Did you like that? That was yeah. nice. Oh, you like that? Okay. Apropos, sir. Apropos. Thank, thank you. Um, trick or treat hours have been set from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Precisely on Friday, October 31st. Those wishing to participate in the Halloween parade should meet at the fire station at 7.30 p.m. for a parade... Is this correct for parade to Lewis Field? They usually go to the Common. Okay. Okay. They did. It's, that's confirmed. Yeah. Okay. That's information from Peter. That's Peter. That is definitely different. Yeah. Where there'll be refreshments, costume judgment, and a bonfire, and that's why it's different. That's yeah. a good different. Any other announcements? Hearing none. Uh, public access. Anybody wish to address the board this evening? Hearing none. Item number two. Paul, custodial three-month review. Um, there are three letters in here that are commending. Is it Murkowski? Yeah, Milkowski. I've always just called you Milkowski. Paul. Milkowski. So. Yeah. Mil Milkowski. I'm just going to call you Paul. That, that's good. Um, I don't know if you had the opportunity to look at these, but uh, they're stellar. Um, polite, hardworking, generous. Um, the only thing that I disagree with Mr. Kucher is I think Paul would be an asset to the town hall support staff. I think you already are an asset yeah. to the town hall. Yes, I agree. Um, and that's just me playing with you on, so yeah. I apologize. I think you get my sense of humor. Um, stellar performance. I think the best thing that Jen Grabowski ever did was recommend that uh, we did not continue with the one that we did appoint. Yeah. Where we basically should have appointed you. Yeah. Right. Um, turn it over to the board. Nope, I'm more than happy with Paul. Paul's uh, performance yeah. and uh, uh, well done, sir. Yes. Thank you. He does an exceptional uh, job, and I have had many comments from people outside of the town hall who come in, and they say they've never seen this town hall look nicer, and it smells so clean. And you're doing a wonderful <laughs> Thank job. You. Do you have any comments for us, sir? No. And you're good for another year then. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Paul. Thank, Thank you. Thank talk you. Before Paul leaves, um, could we, do we, would we have any money in the budget or anything to give him a little increase in pay? I don't know about that right now. We'd have to have a discussion with Betty on that. Okay. All right. We'll bring that up another time, but I'd like okay. to talk about that. Thank you. Thank sir. you very Thank much. Thank you, Paul. Next, we have an empty folder for Mr. Simpson. I don't know if that's good or bad. Welcome, sir. Sorry to bother you mid-text. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, we had a conversation on the phone last week. According to Karen, Mr. Thomo had requested you to address the board this evening. 
Well, just to give us an update what's been going on, we haven't heard from you guys for a while, uh, so if you can just give us an update on what the board's been doing, what are we looking at? Well, I've got pictures too. We have photos. Oh, wow. <laughs> of Excellent. Of the designs, correct? Yes. Oh, great. Uh, yeah, no, I you just, so. you just pictures of my kids and no. then we bring them along. Well, we see those on Facebook. <laughs> Unlike Mr. Fagno, we have Facebook and they are absolutely adorable children. <laughs> So we're getting to the end of the feasibility portion of our work with Jakunski Humes Architects um, and Brian Humes has been the principal there. So what we have developed is uh, elevation drawings, which is this drawing right here. Um, you know, it's still a draft right now, but this is what we're working off of. So first question before we go any further, why were our, not even recommendations, but a vote for recommendations ignored in regards to a seller? Um, they were not ignored. Um, they have been very strongly considered by the architect and by the board. Um, if you will see there, there's a bump out on the back of the building that's approximately 40 by 40 feet. And that's essentially the amount of square footage we could put in a basement if we did put a basement on the building. And we ran this by the cost estimator too. He said that the net increase in cost would come from putting in the basement and adding that equipment into the basement would be around 13,000 something. So there'd be an add cost to put that equipment in the basement of $15,000 on the construction budget. That's good. So given the, like the way the um, sticks out. Mm -hmm. floor pan worked out to put that you know, 35 by 35, or I don't know exactly what the measurements are, in the basement instead of on the exterior, just on a slab. It complicates the layout of the building and um, co why, adds cost why, to the project. Why couldn't the building have been designed with the basement in mind so it minimizes the square footage? We can only put 850 square feet in the basement for use without putting an elevator in. Beyond that point, we have to start thinking elevator, and it really complicates the, the layout and flow of the building. Well, we were looking at storage, utilities, not so much just use. Yes, the, well, the use that we can put down there is the storage and the utilities. That's the 850 square feet. What's the uh, measurements over here, Bill? Some, I, they, it shows it over here on the sally port. And we have two sally ports I'm looking at. Yes, the second sally port is an alternate. An alternate? Yes. And actually, it's the first sally port if you're looking at it from left to right. So what, 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 how big is this thing? The square footage without the sally port is around 4,100 square feet. With the sally port, it's like 4,500, 4,600 square feet. A 4,500 square foot building you're talking about? With the additional sally port, correct. Okay, I, I, personally, I don't, I don't like that at all. I'm sorry, Mrs. Bill. The people of Brookfield don't want a 4,600 square foot police station, and I don't want one. I know, personally, I don't want one. No. Okay. I don't. And I thought we talked about that yeah. last week, last month, when you came over here. The needs analysis that we went through, the only addition to the 4,000 square feet is the alternate of a sally port, and it depends on cost. It doesn't look like we can even afford it. So, so why have it if we can't even afford because it? Because in order to accurately project the cost, we need to have a drawing that includes it so we can include it in our cost estimating. We, we so when we presented this to the cost estimator, he demonstrated that the approximate additional cost for that sally port is around $48,000 for that additional square footage. Is there any way that we can incorporate a uh, frost wall and then have Tantasco come in at a later date? The, the intention is to have a over, uh, some, some, something like a frost wall, but a, uh, a um, retaining wall on the back side of the parking for the police and then a carport to be built at a future time. We did, get, we did get cost estimate numbers on the, if we went out to bid for a carport. But if we did the exca excavation work up front, mm. poured the frost walls, poured the slab, for the sally port, that's all just frost wall with a slab over there. Oh, you're talking about if we were to build the sally port. I, we, we, I, we, I, this, we wouldn't have to do, we wouldn't be able to incorporate a sally port after the fact. I we think we would be able to build a separate carport after the there's, fact. There's only one exterior door that could be incorporated in the design, and we, we could incorporate it. Well, we, 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 we could build the building, I mean, because the alternate would be that extension, so we would just not build that extension on this part. I'm a proponent for a sally port. 
Well, we're still, we're, the plan still includes a sally port. The, the question is two sally ports as the alternate. All right. Um, I, I, and, and, it, and it could very well, very easily be designed that we could add on a second sally port down the road if Tantasco was up for it, if we felt like it. And the retaining wall issue, could that be resolved if we did some type of excavation work in regards to a walkout? What retaining wall are we referring to? You just to? mentioned a retaining wall. Yeah, the retaining wall is for the, because if you look at the property, it slopes down from the, really the town hall lots. There's a, like a steep slope going right. to where yeah. the, the yeah. flattens out for where the, we're planning on the police station. And in that sloped area to, to shore up the parking and without doing a steep hill there, there would be a small retaining wall. So we, we couldn't alleviate that if we did a walkout? Uh, it really doesn't, that slope doesn't really impact the landing pad for the police station. There's really only a one foot grade increase from the front to the back of, the, of where the station would be laid out. Yeah. One thing I want to ask Bill, I kind of like the looks of how the two Sally ports are going to face the road. Is there any way that they could be flipped around so that they'd be on the side of the building? The, well, the two Sally ports is still a very much an alternate right now. Yeah. Um, and uh, one of the things that we discussed was with that, because it, with the two Sally ports, it's sort of an extended facade yeah. or, or just okay. a long face. So mm -hmm. we're thinking maybe a small dormer or something in there to break it up. But, Nothing, um, nothing's breaking that up. When you design, you try to keep the garage out, but it's it serves a purpose because it's a drive. I had the discussion with the OPM three weeks ago. Yeah, the, 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 the challenge with having the garage doors facing a different because those garage doors actually face front and back, so that they can drive. Did you did okay. you meet with us oh, at North Brookfield, Field, or was did you go to that yes. trip? And his one of his huge recommendations, because they had the drive-through Sally Port, was to have it a drive-through. Yeah, the, the the challenge is you need okay. two two faces. All right. So and it, it needs to be a separate access point for the police department. But there's got to be a better way to dress that up. That just hits you right in the face. Yeah, it does. I don't well, like the way. Well, we're, we're not necessarily going to have uh, this. Is the first draft. So of the what, what I'm hearing, you're talking needs analysis. We're talking square footage. Obviously, price is derivative from square footage. Correct. Have you had the discussions to reduce that? You know, I, I looked at it three weeks ago, and that meeting room is ridiculous. Oh, it's the locker huge. room's insane. Yeah, you get ten lo ten large lockers in there. There's just so much waste of space in that design. And the lobby even looks it's a good sized lobby too. Do you need that big of a lobby to go in? The lobby is about ten by ten, which isn't a big size. Well, that's not big, yeah. yeah if it's ten by ten, it. you know, yeah, serving the I know there's no there's no measurements no, on there. No to look measurements. At it. That's why. Uh, really my know. concern is seriously is the square footage. I don't want even want to look at a 4,500 yeah. square foot building. Well, it's not if the alternate is the Sally Port, and that's what makes it 4,500 square feet. Otherwise, it's approximately 4,000 square feet. I don't want to look at a 4,000 square foot building. I want to look at a 3,500 square foot building, seriously. I, I hear that. And I'm does, kind of does, surprised that you guys haven't come up with anything near that yet. Does the architect hear that? We went through the needs analysis. Our committee unanimously voted on the square footage that we came up with, which was around 4,000 square feet with an alternate for a second Sally Port. That is what the architect designed. Um, which is seems appropriate going through the needs analysis and what the station. Oh, everything is. appropriate. We could add another 500 square foot there somewhere, but it would be very easy to make it bigger. But we're not going to go that it way. It was a discussion on the town floor. This is going to exceed that 1.6 million easily, in my opinion. Have they come what, up with the cost? What, yeah. The first round of cost estimates. We have a draft of the cost mm -hmm. estimates. What are they up to now? The construction cost project is around 1.2 million, including the uh, 1.25, including the uh, second salary port. And what's not including that price? That's not including the site work, which will be done by town. There's about 400,000 that's not included in that. So you're really up to 1.6. At this point, we are, but we have to trim it back. We can't no, build. Can't, it I, I don't. I know. I. Um, we're, and we're at that. We have some numbers we can work with now. We haven't had numbers until. This, our, our meeting Wednesday night will be the first time we've had numbers to discuss. Part of the uh, the estimate for this as well, they have numbers in there for excavation, don't they, the site work? Yes. We, we, our cost estimate, we did, we also received cost estimates for if we hired an outside contractor to do the site work, which we're not doing. So the out estimate for the site work expense is $400,000 to have someone outside do it. And our internal estimate is around 200000 which is validated by the professional cost estimate because it would be half of the cost of building it elsewhere. You realize that doesn't mean you have another 200000 to spend somewhere else, right? <laughs> we don't, we, the, the goal right now is the total budget of $1.5 with 100000 in contingency. 
I still like that 1.3. Oh, I want to stay. Oh, I I it's, it's a running joke yeah. with the OPM and myself. You realize that? I, right? Well, I, I like the 1.32, but that number was based on a, us drawing it on the back of a napkin. Now we actually have some numbers. So we're working with these numbers to, and actually we can think there's things we can actually well, pursue I, I think now. Mr. Thoma and myself have, have voiced a strong opinion that those numbers based on that square footage is, is not acceptable by the board. I don't know if Linda wants to chime in. No, I, I, I agree with you. Your committee you and the architect and the OPM, whoever's doing this, they, don't, they work for the town. Hmm. We don't work for them, we, they work for us. Yes, and our, and our we, task is to build a police station. Your task is to put it tell them what we want. That's what you have to ask us. Yes, and, and our goal is to build a police station that will be good for the town for the 25 to 50 years. That's right. Correct. So if you, if your committee needs more okay. guidance as far as what the board is looking at, because we oversee it, we can do that. On a, maybe we should have a motion. In regards to what? On the square footage. I mean, do they need, I, I thought you guys were all set last meeting that we, what we were looking at is like, a 3,500 square foot is, building. Is he coming back with a smaller? What well, the committee voted on unanimously was a square footage of approximately 4,000 square feet, and that is what the architect drew. See, they, I think we need a motion now. Because I thought we gave direction last time. Can, can you tell me what you would like to cut, please? Well, I just did. The, yeah, the, the meeting. So I, I had a discussion with the Jeez. police chief. If you came to that meeting, North Brookfield Police Chief, and you saw it, it's a storage room. And it's probably twice the size of that room. The meeting room, the locker room, the sally port. There's a reason for the size in the locker room. Are we, have per, we have four permanent offices here. Correct. So what's but all the part-time offices live out of their lockers. Right. Okay, so we have, what, five or six on at one time? So we've got all that locker space would be used for the officers on duty because you need to store and you need your uniform to be on site. I, I would like to invite members of the select board, I think maybe probably one at a time, to come to our meeting so we can have this discussion. Oh, absolutely. Okay. When's your next meeting? Tomorrow night. I'm going to try to make it. So, but right yeah. now, in the meantime. So do you, my, I, I, my, my encouragement would be that you investigate what my, is included in this new reason. My recommendation is to have Mr. Thilmo go. The architect's going to be there. The OPM's going to be there. Um, represent the board of selectmen. Have the discussion about a smaller size yeah. and if we need a vote. The architect was told to come up with this. He was not told we come up with a 3,500 square foot play, uh, building right now. He was told to come up with a 4,000 yeah. square foot. Yeah. Exactly. And spend 1.6 million. Well, a lot of you guys voted for that, you said. Our entire budget is 1.6. We, we did not vote to spend 1.6. I thought you said that a little while ago. We voted that our entire budget is going to be 1.6, which includes 100,000 in contingency. And that was the last discussion we had with Mr. Simpson and Mr. Eaton. And, and we now have numbers from a professional cost estimator, which is the first time we've had real numbers on this project since its inception with the Municipal Facilities Planning Committee. Bill, I'm not, I'm not, this isn't going to fly by me. I'm sorry. Okay. So can you have the conversation? Oh, absolutely. Tomorrow? Oh, I'm, yes. I'm going to try to be there. I've got to see what my uh, plans are, though. I, I think a discussion where you can ask the questions of what you think is appropriate and inappropriate, and we can respond to them with... Well, where I'm scratching answers. my head, Bill, is that we sat on a committee for three years, and, and we as a, as a committee downsized the Chief's recommendations, and this looks like the Chief's basically getting everything he wants again. The Municipal Facilities Committee's initial proposal was for a 6,000 square foot building. Well, initial. Yeah. Initial. But when we the, came the back to the second one to the town was 4,600 square feet, and then we brought that down to 4,000 square feet, which is what is presented here. And that was at what we discussed 4,000 square feet at the town meeting. And there's also a confusion with net to square, gross square footage in various proposals, because the, the net square footage on this, the net's the smaller number, is net the bigger number. Net smaller. Yeah, the net the net square footage on that is like 3,300 or something. When you put in the walls and the hallways and all the other stuff, that's when it comes to 4,000 square feet. And what's the issue with the basement? You guys didn't vote for a basement. Correct. And, and as I as I mentioned earlier, the see the bump out on the that section there. That is the the bulk of what we could put in the basement, because there's only certain things we can put in the basement without having to install an elevator. So why couldn't you put that downstairs? If we put it downstairs, according to the professional cost estimator that we hired to evaluate this question, uh, it would cost an additional $13,000 in the construction cost to put a basement in because above of- Above and beyond what it would cost for that? Above and beyond that right there. 
that doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense at all. You know what I'm saying? There are reasons for this. I don't know them. So, well, I would gladly... Enlighten, I would, enlighten me there, Mr. Simpson. Well, I would like you to come to our meeting because I don't actually have... The, I've, uh, I've been a builder for 24 years and it makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. I've always thought if you put a foundation up, you've got that space downstairs to put up walls. And, and it's, it's an extra four or five feet of concrete. That's it. It's not it, though. There's, there's, there's a bit more to it than that. I mean, that, right. that additional... 35 by 35 foot section is not a huge cost on the addition to the building either. So extending the basement means we also have to, instead of pouring a slab, we have to build a full floor there. There's some cost there. There's the cost of waterproofing all those walls. And there's the cost of dealing with the, uh, the uphill challenges that come out of having the mechanicals in the basement rather than having things on the ground so level. So I guess it's, yeah. it's the foundation as opposed it's the uh, it's a slab as opposed to a foundation that you're talking about. You still have to well, have you still walls. you still have to have a four foot frost wall with right. a slab on it's, instead it's of a basement over, it's gonna be with over a four feet with a ceiling. Right. Right. All right. So if you can just have those discussions next. Well, I'm gonna try to make it. I don't know if I can do it. Uh, I'm gonna try to be there. I uh, but we answer to them, the people of Brookfield. Yeah. That's great. And that's what they said. No. 4,000, 4,600 square foot building. They don't want that. Well, that, that's the difference between the extra sally port, which is an alternate, and the uh, square footage on that building. Well, it has a lot to do with the square footage within that building as well. And e there's a reason for each one of those spaces. And, and I, the architect is the best person to answer those questions. But, and if you would like to ask me some of those questions, I can answer some of them in general terms, but mm -hmm. I'm not. Yeah, I know, I know. The, yeah. What else you got? What did someone talk about? What else? Another thing looks, I mean, I know we don't have dimensions, but it looks so almost the sergeant's office is as big as the stuff. The sergeant's office is about the same size as the chief's yeah. office. Not a patrol room. No, it's a patrol room. What's, it's, there's six, six, six desks in there for patrollers to sit at their workstations and write their reports. And, and You um, need that many that you wouldn't have all six in there at one time. No, but each... Officer does need a workstation to file his reports. And in all likelihood, we need to plan for some growth in the town over the next 25 to 50 years. So there has to be some room for. Well, we can take a little bit out of the meeting room area. We've for, already cut. To expand it. Well, the meeting room is designed for 15 people in a meeting room, which is, according to the chief and to other chiefs in the area, that that's the standard side. If you're going to do workshops or provide courses, trainings, 15 is the low end of the size that's appropriate for those workshops and trainings. And that square footage for that space is what is appropriate for 15 people as an audience and for safety requirements. I, uh, I don't know if we should have a motion today on this, seriously, because I might not get to it, but yeah. can we have another meeting? It'll be two more weeks. Well, and can one I of your members make the meeting tonight, I tomorrow? I'm going to try, but I, I can't. Like if, if you can't make it, what time is it? It's at 6.30. 6.30, give me a call. Well, text me. Right. Just tell me you can't make it. Okay. It's going to be harder for me to make it. Than I know, I know. I, and I would send Eva. I wouldn't go because I'm not, I don't know that much about children. So well, well, I mean, we can well, you know, have I, a motion I, anyways. I, 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 would, I, I really don't want to entertain a motion until we're educated. Yeah, I, I would like you to learn as much as you yeah. can because there are reasons for all of these. You wanted, you wanted a motion last time. Yeah, but you wouldn't do it. So <laughs> let's do it this time. Wow. Yeah. So I appreciate your taking your time to consider this because there is a lot of thought that has gone into this so far. Yeah. This is not I merely. Uh, I, ended, I know. I know. You guys sketch. are doing a lot of work, and uh, I just don't want you to lose the bigger picture. That's all. Is that it? So, well, would you like the rest of my update? Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it good news? Uh, well, just that there's, there's, there's just a, in general, since I want to get all the stuff that's been going on passed along to you. Um, so we're closing in on the end of the feasibility work, which if approved, we would then move forward to design documents, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where we, you know, that's why I'm here to, you know, why you need an update and why yep. we need to, to talk about this. Because if, if this is, if you're not comfortable with this yet, then we're in big trouble because it's going to hurt our scheduling too. Um, Although you might have just jinxed yourself, we might be in big trouble. We, we may be. We, who knows? Um, but we ha we will be presenting at our meeting tomorrow night a schedule for the entire project. Um, we've got cost estimates that we have in place that we're going to discuss tomorrow night as well. Um, the police station has been considering the geothermal issue, but that's sort of did that's you up in the air. That's up in the air. Did you, so. did you get a price for that yet? 
was it the 126 figure? The cost for the heating internally for the HVAC system estimated is 126,000. So I passed that along to Rudy, and I think you already knew that. I, I think somebody. Well, maybe Rudy told me. Yeah. I forget who. Um, and uh, no, the chief told me. Yep. Um, let's see. Was there something else? I think that's pretty much it. Except that we will be starting to submit payment vouchers as well. Um, for the work of the architect and the OPM, we should have those in place in, in your mailbox after tomorrow night's meeting. Just no, one more question. Yeah. Which way, which direction are you guys going? Are you going stick built or modular? Or? That's a part of the cost discussion tomorrow night. Okay. So we um, haven't decided that yet? We haven't made a final decision okay. on that yet. No, we, okay. we, we, we want to, now that we have this, this, we're submitting our floor plans, elevations and the cost estimate that we've provided without the numbers to modular companies okay. Okay. to compare um, was that design was that design design the design is designed with the the spacings for modular if uh, mm -hmm. to bring in on trucks because there's certain square you right. know each room has to be a certain that 14 takes, feet yeah. wide or something um, so we are also submitting this to modular companies yeah. for pricing okay um, so we're looking at it and Hopefully one of you can make it tomorrow night. I'm and, gonna try and, and like if if you anything. cannot make the meeting, I'd gladly sit down with you and I'm glad I'm sure the architect would gladly sit down with one or two of you to we can go through all of the numbers and all you know, the reasons for each one of these spaces. And I think that would be more appropriate than you know, than not having that discussion Absolutely. and making a vote. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Bill. Um Item number four, special use permits. Um, the issue, Mr. Thoma, with the porta parties, I guess, was addressed. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna make sure they're on uh, site. So, I'll entertain a motion to allow the chair to sign all twelve applications for special use fishing. How are they gonna ensure they're gonna be on site, Karen? Do they say they're gonna? Uh... Well, I talked directly to um, Mr. Bois, and he said he's pretty good. He's busy going to make sure that they're put right in place where they're very visible. He said what happened last time is they did have two, but one was placed so out of the way that no one used it. So he's gonna make sure both of those are right in. Can we put one in the front yard? Yeah. And put he, it right outside my uh, front said, property he, then. He, he, he said that if there is a problem, he would, he would need my name authority. Okay. He's really on top of it. Okay. Uh, so moved with that motion. I will Sorry. second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 No discussion, I'm assuming. Could be worse. I could have Linda's signature. <laughs> yeah, can I write slower than you? Should be on the first one still. Cool. You, make you me. sound like make a, me. you sound like you sound like a doctor. You can't even understand it. Yeah. And make the pay of the porta potty repairman. <laughs> All right. Item number five. Uh, entertain a motion to sign, and this requires a signature from all three. The uh, final payment for the whacker. So moves. I'll, I'll second that. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, let's time Linda. Come on, get over here. Just fell asleep. Just one page. Just the one? Yeah. Just one. There you go. Documentation of that. Item number six, I will entertain a motion to accept the bid. Um, it was at Advanced Energy Concepts. Uh, they did go out to bid cable access. PCM TV. <laughs> Is that what you're talking about? In regards to a cooling system. Yeah, the heat pump. It's a heat pump, actually, I believe. So we moved. I'll second that. Now, what, what was that for now? A heat pump for the um, cable room at okay. the elementary school. Oh, for the thank studio. You, thank you. The okay. cable studio. Heating, 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 heating. The heat pump oh, itself. Okay. And, and they, they went with the low bid. They did go out for bid. And so they're paying, they're, they're paying for all of this? Right, they're yeah. budget. Okay. Let's go. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Item number six, 
I'll entertain a motion to ratify the signature of the transfer number seven. Number, seven. number seven of the transfer of the 2011 Crown Vic police vehicle that was uh, deemed totaled. So moved. I'll second that. Any discussion? Um, the, the vehicle has been taken, uh, the title has been signed and transferred. Okay. And uh, the police chief did negotiate a, a better price than they actually offered, so he did his due diligence. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Number eight, other. Were we going to discuss? What's the other? Changing. Yeah, well, I, I got this, Linda. I okay, got all right, all right. Um, with regret, I'm going to have to oh. um, entertain a motion to accept. I don't think we have to even accept it, just acknowledge it, don't we? Yeah, all you have to Why? do is Why? Why? What do you have? You're retired. You have nothing. You're not going anywhere. All right, uh, to accept, well, Acknowledge the resignation from Miss Lincoln from the Brookfield Housing Authority, effective yesterday. <coughs> effective yesterday. I just have a lot of other commitments at the moment, and I don't have time. Do I have a motion? So moved. I'm not sending a letter of appreciation. Oh, we're just going to we're just going to verbalize it. That's I'm all. highly insulted. <laughs> do, we, do we have a Do we have a second? <laughs> I'll second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Highway Department uh, received a letter today. Uh, they're requesting that the state basically remove the Jersey barrier between on the bridge project for the winter for plowing. Um, Those barrels you're talking about? No, the, the physical Jersey barriers. <gasps> One side, I had a discussion with the GC about a month ago. I don't know what side it was, but they're actually pinned. They, they pin it. Um, <coughs> the way this is set up now, it, it meets state regulations. What this does with the barriers, it allows a walking path for people that walk. Oh, okay. Herb's issue is with the plowing. I'm on the fence with this. So he's asking for a letter to go to the state to request that those barriers be removed. Now the state puts them up though, right? Correct. So why would they want to take them down if they put them up? Herb wants them down so he can plow. But he's gonna plow regardless. He yeah. thinks he's gonna do a better job. But if the state feels that they should be there, they should be there. Yeah, I'm not going to play around with that. No, I'm not either. Do you want to have a discussion with Mr. Chaffee and take this up at our next meeting? Not particularly, no. I mean, the letter's right there, right? Well, it defines why he wants to do it. Yeah. No. Did you read the letter? It just came in today. No, I haven't seen it. Can, we, can, we can you do me a favor and have a discussion with her? I, I've, okay. I've spoke with the GC and Mr. Chaffee, okay. not, not, this, not from this particular letter, but when the fire engine had the incident. They mm -hmm. went down and spoke. Okay. Um, and that's how I learned they're pinned. Yeah. Um, so if you can discuss this sure. with her. Can I have it? And then we'll put it on the next agenda. Okay. We'll put it on as an item, please. Okay. Um, all right. Mm -hmm. We have a meeting scheduled for election day. I, that's not an <coughs> oversight. I did not plan that. <coughs> Obviously, we cannot meet. Do we want to reschedule it for the night preceding or well, the night after? It would have to be the night after because before. Ooh, the fourth, yeah. Yeah, because if you have it on the third, everything's going to be set up in here. You know, every the booths, everything is set up that. So I think the fifth would be a better. The planning yeah. board has a meeting. Yeah. What's up? So what's going on, boy? So they'll set that up on the third. Yeah, it's set up on the third. It'll be all, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, it's set up the day ahead of time. How about the sixth? What about a morning meeting on the third? We can have a meeting in the selectman's office. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do the third. That's fine. Yeah. So I'll entertain a motion to cancel the fourth and reschedule for the third so at 9 p.m. At 9 a.m., I'm sorry. So moved. Do I have a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, did you have anything else, Linda? Uh, no. I, just a little discussion back on that. Now that is the last day to submit articles too for the special. That is that will be by 3 p.m. or. We can obviously entertain another discussion. Yeah, so if, if technically, if something comes in, which mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's not going to. We can have another meeting sometime. So you're pretty sure that all the articles will be in by I would then. think so. So we can discuss It's just them. a special time. Okay, all right. All right. Okay. 
Anything else before the board? We did have a special guest walk in. <coughs> Mr. Berthium, if you'd like to uh, sure. step you to the hot seat. In the hot seat. Mr. Hot Berthium. I like the hot seat. The hot seat. It's black, so it's a little bit cooler. Uh, Mr. Berthium, for those that don't know, is running to become our next state representative in the 5th Worcester District. What? Didn't you race against him? I did. And he, 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 he beat me very well. We were together a lot. <laughs> But he is, he is a good man. Um, I'm, I'm not going to be biased in this, so I'm going to zip my lip and welcome. The floor is yours. This, this is a venue for anybody that wants to introduce themselves, not only to this board, but to the listening audience out in Brookfield. Are we live? We, no, we're no, not, not live. Um, I appreciate that. Um, I've met Linda, and obviously I know Steve. Yes. Nick, I haven't had a chance to meet you. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, Running the same reason Steve uh, basically did is both of us were tired of cuts to state aid and illegal immigrants getting every benefit under the sun and all the cuts coming to back to the towns and, and um, hurting every town in this district. Uh, some Don't forget others. the taxes now, Weaver. I'm getting there. Okay. And the, the tax after tax after tax. Um, um, I can give you the good news that uh, every day I go out and talking to people in the district and people that are Democrats are typically at support of, um, this type of agenda before I've had enough. So, um, and, and that's a recurring theme, like on a daily basis. I haven't had too many people happy with what's going on right now, and I'm sure you ran into the same thing when you, when you were meeting people. So. Um, so that's why I'm doing it. It, it. When you're a selectman, it gives you that special perspective. And when you see your mm -hmm. cherry sheet get cut, 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 and then they give you this much more the next year and say, oh, but we gave you more money. Um, it, it's just disheartening. It's disheartening, and, it, and it's hard for towns to plan ahead and plan for projects like this where you need debt exclusions or overrides to do some of the smallest projects now because you can't bond out and put, put it in the budget anymore because you're not sure. So. Um, so it's I, it's going really good. It's going. I'm waiting for like a comet to hit the moon or something because it's going really good. But I would, any question you have, seriously, any specific. So Mr. Valenzuela came before us about a month or two ago, and my question is, what? Do I you always forget that he's 29 years old. <laughs> well, he's got the energy of a 29 year old. We've done so. doors a couple of days together, and, and and when we get going, I'm right with him. But. Yeah. <laughs> Three o'clock in the afternoon. It hurts like, the next huh, morning. Yeah. Listen, I'm 20 years older than yeah. you. <laughs> so obviously, you live in Spencer. If you reside yeah. in Spencer, Fifth Worcester District is 11 towns. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, and I made the comment on other meetings that you know, Representative Gobi or <coughs> Senator Brewer, although they're active and the support of, they never come to these meetings unless they're handing something out, which we yes. do appreciate. Yes. But what are you, as a Spencer resident, going to do not only for the other 10 towns, but for specifically, obviously, because we represent Brookfield, what are you going to do for Brookfield? Um, I, I can tell you, and during this campaigning, I, I only missed two <coughs> town meetings. It was because my mother passed away. It mm -hmm. was her funeral and, and arrangements. Um, and I don't know, does, do any of them come to your town meetings? I, we've never had... I've, I've seen them at one, and that was yeah. to present Miss Lincoln with yeah. a presentation for retiring. Uh, yeah. Same as yeah. us. We had uh, Ann came to one of ours. Um, but it was to receive an award for the And it, it, so, it sounds like, you know, I'm, I'm beating them up, but somebody that has something to do with, very significant something to do with the budget, especially in the town of Brookfield, yeah, exactly. should have some interaction. Yes. Exactly. And, um, I do a lot of work in Brookfield. I'm here all the time. I actually did a lot of work on the on St. Mary's volunteering over the years. Mm -hmm. Actually, I helped build your... Uh, Shed over the front door that was here. The oh, you did that? You yeah, helped out helped, over there? helped a couple guys do that a few years ago. So, um, this is my main area. Spencer and Brookfield is mostly where I work, and uh, a little in New Braintree up that way. So, I'm here. Uh, obviously, it's state aid is number one. And, um, and another thing, too, would be nice to see you know, you see all the other Brookfields, they're all getting all kinds of grants all the time. It doesn't seem as though we're getting anything here, and it would be nice to have somebody. To represent us and see if you know you can help us get more grants. All you have to do community. is call. Um, I can tell you, it always served me well. The eight years I was a selectman, my cell phone number went on the town's website, mm -hmm. um, so I was very available and, and open to anybody to ask questions. Um, I'm the only one that puts my cell phone on all my campaign literature. A bunch of people told me not to do that, but I did it anyway. So. Um, 
and obviously we're going to do that, um, try to fight for local aid, Mike and myself, if we both get in. Um, we all know there's plenty of money in the budget in this state. Um, Steve likes to point out, and he's 100% right, that the budget's grown $10 million in the last eight years, but local aid's gone down. And that's a travesty. It shouldn't mm -hmm. happen. We know it's getting wasted. Um, so, so Matt, yeah. not to cut you off, but Matt's going to come in here if he came in, and uh, I'm the cynic, and say the same exact thing. More state aid, more local aid, mm -hmm. Chapter 90, 70, all that good stuff. What are you going to do? I can tell you what bring it back Matt's going to say is cut, cut, cut. That's all my opponent says is cut, cut, cut. And he doesn't tell you where he's going to cut benefits for illegal immigrants. Um, how about this transportation tobacco where we just got a grant for a hundred cars and then we we're supposed to get rid of a hundred and they let a hundred people take cars home. That was in the millions mm -hmm. of dollars. Uh, every one of these scandals has cost the town money. Um, I, I think, I mean personally myself, my voice and working with the other and the rest of the caucus, but this time I, I really do think that there's going to be enough Republicans to get voted that some of the other side is going to start to wake up and start to slow down on some of this wasteful spending. So, Any questions? Obviously, I can't do it myself. You could have done it yourself. No, None no, of us can no, do it no, ourselves. No, not, with, do it. not by yourself. You, you have to go there and not be afraid, you know, and, and be a voice and take a stand, and I'm really good at that. My wife tells me that. That's my wife, Wendy, by the way. <laughs> Hi, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> She's the big boss, but... Um, but we all know the problems. It just it just takes the, the you know the intestinal mm. fortitude to go down there and hold the line and 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 actually bring these problems up. And I, but I, I do think there's going to be a change if they expect to pick up roughly 15 Republicans in the House this time. I think that if that, that will happens, make a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. It will, and, and it's still short of the um, the veto proof uh, one third they need. But I mean <clears throat> the veto sustaining one third, but. I think it'll send a message. They need a wake up call. Yeah. They really do. Um, Beacon Hill needs a wake up call. A big wake up call. And the good thing, like I said, the most positive thing is people that you never thought you would hear say that are now saying that. And actually putting signs on their property for me or Mike or somebody else. So, um, I, th I think a big shift like that will start to scare some of them. Um, I know one of the first things I've heard. Um, that's supposed to come up after the election is uh, um, driver's license versus driver's licenses for illegal immigrants. Um, we know why that got pushed off till after the election. Uh, that's going to be one of the first things, but we'll see. Maybe it won't. Maybe yeah. if enough of us get elected, maybe that'll go away. I mean, I don't know. But all we can do is try and make little gains every year, and we'll get there. People are starting to change and starting to um, starting to. Stop drinking the Kool Aid, so to speak. I hear that term all the time. <laughs> Drink the Kool Aid. That's the, I guess, I, the Jim I, Jones reference. I like right? Kool That's not a good thing, though, from Jim no, Jones. No, 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 but, Great Kool Aid's good. But, you know, it can be done. And, and we've both said this we can't do it by ourselves. You know, we need everybody to help. So, um, and, and we have been very lucky that a lot of people have joined and helped us. And, and uh, we've got a ton of support. So, and that's happening for Mike as well, and a lot of the other candidates running too. So I think there's going to be a big change this time. I hope you're right. Yeah. So I, for those that uh, don't remember, election day is November fourth. Two weeks from today. Two yep. weeks from today. today. I came quick. Get out. Get out and vote. It, it, you you can tell them it comes a lot quicker than you think. Oh, yeah, you think oh I got a couple weeks to do this and then it's the day after. It's, it's I quick. remember when we first started helping Steve. It was back in probably the first of March and, and before you know it, we're up here in November, coming approaching us in two weeks. That's one thing I had refused to do. Um, Ryan Fatman from down Webster. I had talked to him one day and it was February and he was knocking on doors already. I'm like yeah, not gonna happen, kid. Not till we get to 50, 60 degrees. <laughs> I'm not gonna go. Yeah, if, if you met him, he's he's. Oh, I know, I know, he's insane. I, I wore my ice skates out, knocking on doors. So Did you? I, I remember the ice. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of freezing cold. I'm not. I wasn't a big fan of falling a few times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that a couple times too, but. But any questions you have anytime, Steve has my cell phone, it's okay. on our website. We'll find you. Okay, we were lucky to get DonnieBirthium.com. Um, it's not too many of those. I wouldn't think so, no. So that actually in Spencer there's four of us. There's my father, myself, and two other ones. So Jeez. go figure. Not with a desire for a website except for one. I know. Good for so, you. Um, and we're on Facebook, which actually Wendy does a lot for me because I'm not too good with it. But. Okay. 
Well, there yeah. always is a good woman, a oh, woman behind a good man. I'm out lucky. There. I'm very I'm lucky. Very lucky that she not only puts up with this stuff, but participates with me. And, and I always made the comments behind closed doors that the wrong Barthy was running. So. Yeah. yeah, I've heard that too. But she doesn't. She doesn't have the temperament for it. So. She would yell a lot quicker than I would. But right, well, anytime. Well, you thank you not only for coming this evening and you. introducing thank you. yourself, thank you, thank you for running as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other business before the board? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I'll second that motion. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you.